that since I mentioned this game in my last review, Yamaha Supercross, it would only be fair if I went ahead and just reviewed this as well. I wonder if this is going to be a pattern. If I mentioned a game in a review, I'm going to do that one next. Like if I said this game was nothing like Zelda. <laughs> okay, that's just mean. No, I'm never reviewing Zelda. No matter how many times you guys request or demand it. If you want to see a review of a Zelda game, then just go watch the other million reviews of the game. I think it's been pretty well covered. As for Excitebike, this is a simple racing game, except the only thing that you're really racing is the time. You can play with other cyclists, but their position in the race really doesn't matter. They're more to get in your way. There are three options in the main menu, and two modes to play the game. Inventively enough called A and B. Would it have killed them to call it Solo and Group instead of A and B? But it's an 80s game, so I guess they weren't that forward thinking yet. <sighs> Let's start with the A mode, also known as Solo Play. They give you tracks with four lanes. You can switch between lanes at any time by pressing the up and down buttons. You use the two button to accelerate at a normal speed and you hold down the one button to turbo up your speed even further. Now you'll have to watch your temperature gauge when you do this. Cause if you hold down the turbo button too long you'll overheat your motorcycle and you'll have to wait a few seconds for it to cool down to get back to racing. The five tracks go from basic to really complex. You can get through the first three tracks fairly easily. But the fourth track you'll need to do it a couple times to really get it down. But the fifth track is just brutal to complete with a good time. The solo mode, oh excuse me, A mode, can get very boring fast. But to be fair, it's more of a practice mode anyways. That brings us to the B mode, or as I call it, group mode. You race against other racers. There are only three of them when you start a race, but apparently they must go in groups since if you pass all the racers you started off with, you'll run into even more of them. However, since your objective is not to beat them, but to get the best time for the track, it's okay. The other racers will get in your way often, and can get a bit problematic when the tracks get a little narrower. It does help that you can use your back tire to hit their front tire to make them crash and get out of your way. They aren't the only ones who can crash though, you can as well. You can crash if you land a jump wrong, or if the other racers use the same back tire trick as you. If you crash, you'll have to run back to your amazingly always working perfect condition motorcycle, and then you have to go finish up the race. You can never die in the game, so crash all you want, the only thing that you'll lose is time. But the big thing about Excitebike is the third option in the main menu, the design mode. They let you make your own tracks, and this option alone makes it worth every Wii point. There are quite a few options on the obstacles or helpers that you want to put in your track. Helpfully enough, they label them with the alphabet, and you'll have to remember which letter represents which object. Is it a pain to try and remember which letter is which object? Yes, but it is worth it when you can make the most exciting courses your mind can come up with. After you're done with the course, you just choose how many laps you want your track to consist of, and then click finish. Then you can choose to play your track in an A or B mode. They even let you save up to one track, and while that's extremely limited, at least we get that. Excitebike is 500 Wii points, and even though the game is 25 years old, it's still fun to play for minutes at a time. It's not a game that you'll be playing for hours, but it's a game you'll go back to once in a while, and you should definitely buy it now.